Hi everyone and welcome to Reed's Reed Spider-Man Crawl Space Edition. Check us out at spidermancrawlspace.com. Well everybody, I'm a little over a week late here, but I decided it'd be a great time to finally review Amazing Spider-Man 21, aka Night 14, and of course, Black Clap Mary Jane number four, and of course, the big conclusion to the Gold Goblin number five. How do they all connect and how do they win things? Because after all, we're finally gonna get those answers to what did Peter do? So let's hit right over there with Amazing 21 first. First of all, the pros. Um, the story doesn't waste any time kind of dropping us right in as we get the flashbacks of actually um, what occurred here. We're actually seeing how it unfolded. The return of Rabin is actually put in pretty once as we can see Mary Jane and Peter in pretty much horror as we see what the battle is. And the fight is pretty much since of course the emissary is more of a battle and magic with uh, Spider-Man that he's really used to. So the fact is it's extremely brutal. It's actually well done. And it's actually nice to see, you know, Peter and Mary Jane, of course, more on Mary Jane's end, actually caring and loving for Peter as well as the two of them are fighting. It definitely lets up some nice little answers as we're finding out that Raven, of course, all the way from 555, of course, is behind all this, which we thought he was with everything way up in the other parts, too. And, of course, he uses his powers pretty effectively in how he traces both Peter down and Mary Jane and, of course, how he gets them set up in, of course, this possible apocalyptic New York City because, you know, we've seen that tons of time. But that's also where we kind of stop here with the cons here. Uh, first of all, the story has a lot of problem with name issues, number one. Of course, <laughs> Rami becomes Stephanie, the daughter of Mary Jane. And, of course, we finally find out Owen's this kid's name. And while I'll give it head point, considering as a parent myself, as well as having younger nieces and nephews, I know exactly what it's like to try to get the kids out to do anything else, too. However, it, Raven's escape is a little ridiculous, even by Marvel standards. The fact that he was able to get the bed apart, get all the weapons, the scythe, the mystical stuff, and everything to make, redo the Mitchell to actually come after Spider-Man and Mary Jane is a little too much to actually hand wave. I'm sorry, it's absolutely ridiculous. And of course, it's very interesting since these are supposed to be Mayan symbols, and we're seeing rune symbols. The runes in the Nor of the Nor Norwegians and of course the Mayan of the early empires didn't really have a lot of similarities between them. So henceforth, it's a little bit part here. I don't want to blame too much on John Romita Jr., considering his back work with Avengers and of course Thor especially, I think he was trying to channel a little bit of the mystical system. And the truth is, his artwork works very well. I mean, except for some faces on the character, it works really good, especially the face battle. But the point of we've been waiting almost a year for this storyline finally to happen, and the fact that even though we had made some of the guesses to actually get the ending with them thrown in this post-apocalypse of New York, it's basically hinting that they can't be together because the bad things are going to happen in the future. So it sets up the mystery of definitely what is going on, and we're getting some answers to, which definitely makes me looking forward to issue 22 of Amazing Spider-Man. But I don't have really too much to put in there, too. Outside some of the character areas and a few other things, and the fact that Paul is very much aware of of the emissary and a couple other issues but with all the mess ups with editorial and names and writers the fact that the writer and apparently the editor don't know the name of their characters half the time and the fact that we're kind of getting thrust into this after waiting so long and the fact that it's kind of done in a ridiculous manner brings the issue down but i'll actually be very nice to it actually give it a c it definitely raises my interest because i really want to know what really happened now that peter and mary jane are in this uh possible future of new york and of course how this actually connects with the whole storyline so i'm definitely interested in that too but otherwise it gets a solid c from me and speaking of storylines we've been waiting for, over to Mary Jane and Black Hat number four here. Let's get right into the pros here with what Jed McKay launched with us. First of all, it's actually pretty good here with the pros. I love the fact that they're having the fight and um, everything between Felicia and Mary Jane is well done. These two have been friends for a long time, but I like how Mary Jane calls out on things on Felicia about her relationship with Peter, how she wants him to be happy, wants her to be happy, and she has another different life too. It actually feels like some of the best characterization I've seen from Mary Jane and Felicia, despite all the ridiculousness that has been going on for the last year in Amazing Spider-Man. And I like the fact that it allows, of course, the triggering of powers. And, of course, she hits the jackpot and gets all three sevens, guys. My lucky number. And Mary Jane basically gets this ability to, you know, alter reality in a close perspective. Kind of a little bit of a, a beyonder meets a little bit of uh, Captain Universe, which is actually pr pretty cool, especially when she brings uh, Sim back to life, gives him back his missing finger, because, of course, we have to figure out how all Hallows Eve is going to keep her powers, right? Right? Um, and I like the fact that they take out the Guardian, actually, in a very respectable manner. And, of course, the little dialogue between Sim, Black Cat, and Mary Jane is really cool about taking the Soul Sword and the fact there is a catch with it that Sim never responded, that once you get it, of course, 
course, your soul's taken. Belasco knew this, so he would actually have them actually take it, kill whoever took the main sword if they survived, and send whoever left back to uh, Earth why he got the wards and ridson so he could rule Limbo. So it's nice that there's actually some twist in the fact that we knew this was coming, but that's kind of where that stops. Um, as much as we get some great characterization here between Mary Jane and Blackhead, even some character development with Sim, which I think was a nice part, especially with the X-Men history of with Limbo and the Soul Swords and Belasco, which as a fan, I really enjoyed that. But it feels like half this issue is really tied up about battling the, uh, of course, Guardian of the Screaming Tower. And of course, the fact is they kind of hold their own pretty good until Mary Jane hits the three sevens on her watch, which allows her to pretty much completely get rid of the Guardian for good. And of course bring Sim back to life because the truth is the ending kind of feels like it was thrown there oh yeah we forgot that we had Hydra and, and Agents of Haven and all that just sitting out there waiting for us to come out we forgot this plus they set up a mystery where the fact is when the three of them walking out they're saying I can't believe you did that after after they found the soul sword so we don't even know what the point is of the soul sword we don't know if anybody actually even took it we don't know if it's still in the tower or anything we just know it's a mystery it feels like we could have had a lot of this all wrapped up here in issue four but we needed to get this fifth issue and it kind of feels haphazard how it's kind of rushed at the end with them ready to fight all the different hordes from hydra the haven to who knows whoever who wanted the soul sword and we don't even know how the fact they're even going to get out of limbo because as we saw mary jane and felicia are back on earth according to the current issue of Amazing Spider-Man. So we know they're going to survive. We know Sim's got his finger back thanks to Mary Jane, so we know all Hallows Eve's going to keep her powers, but it feels like we have a storyline that is like three issues behind where we currently are in the Spider-Man books, and the truth is we're kind of tired of it, and it seems like bad timing, and the ending feels kind of like, oh, duh. It's, it's not a bad issue. I've liked the series so far, and I am looking forward to seeing how it ends. But because of all that said, I'm going to just give the issue a B. It's got a nice little wrap-up, finding the mystery of here. And, of course, we don't know what's going to happen if Mary Jane hits all three of the um, skulls on her parts, which I think we're going to see next issue since we got all the sevens this issue. When I answer some mysteries and stuff, it really doesn't do anything. It's kind of dragging its feet on a storyline that is now, believe it or not, almost three issues old. So a B for me for the creative team of... Mary Jane and Black Cat. So let's actually wrap it up to the best book I've read these last two weeks with the Gold Goblin. What did Cantwell do? Did he stick the landing any in the Gold Goblin? Is Norman Osborn, of course, set to get back to his sins as the Green Goblin? Or will he find a way to fight through it? So let's go ahead and get to the pros. First of all, I like how this picked up. The, th the part between, of course, uh, Queen Goblin and Norman is actually well done. The fact that they're actually dealing with all the sins and the pieces. And I like the little twist that got thrown at that Ashley couldn't just throw the sins back at Norman. The fact is, thanks to his guilt and Ready had since they were removed. It actually works as kind of a shield and flashes back at her and actually all the sins consuming Ashley. And we actually get a really good character of what's been consuming her after she got messed around and thanks to Maxine Danger and beyond. And it's actually very heart-wrenching the fact this is happening as well as how it's so torn with Norman as he deal with this but see we see all the plans that were laid out by Ashley about the jack-o'-lantern trying to get everything else parts with the family and the fact that the, everything got screwed up her revealing about the hobgoblin mystery and all that it's well done and I even like how Norman reaches out to Peter and Peter actually says himself he's going to help her but he help Norman here, but the same thing, he's actually been holding a lot of guilt with everything and about that trust factor. It takes a lot of beats that haven't been addressed in the main Amazing Spider-Man, and it's well done by Cantwell in this storyline. The fight things are great, and it's very interesting. Why the ending is shocking, that's what kind of leads us to the cons. First of all, there's a lot of inconsistency where the artwork, the coloring is messed up on the Gold Goblin. Um, Spider-Man's, of course, um, Oscorp suit is also messed up. He's swinging on a level with the gl glowing spider and the armbands, yet he doesn't have his glider or some of his other stuff. Also, the fact that how Peter's able to bring out Ashley's um, Queen Goblin in public to actually expose her, that she's been behind everything, is a little kind of like a quick little page turn. But like, let's reveal this to the public so everybody knows that Norman's exonerated and the fact is everything's been thing and you know the fact that the Queen Goblin has actually been uh, messing around with everybody from Jack o Lantern to Hobgoblin. We're just going to throw that all out there and throw the big mystery. Well, that's great, but it's done in two pages. And why it's really good about, of course, the battle, because Spider-Man actually has shown very competent in this fight here with 
um, Ashley as the Queen Goblin, why Norman is kind of pinned and injured. And it's nicely done, but it's, the problem is, is why is it so easily handle her when she was having such a struggle against them over in the main Spider-Man book here? Only for at the end would Norman have no choice but to throw the chain around and, of course, break Ashley's neck and kills her. And why the sins technically died within the fact of remorse and anger and guilt are now part of our Norman. So in a way, he has gotten his sins back, but at the same time is, what is he going to choose as the gold guy? Goblin. It's a really good series that really leaves us wanting more. In fact, is it's getting thrown in too as a, we'll see the Gold Goblin return here for the current What Did Peter Do storyline. And of course, more of it unfolding in the current Red Goblin series. And by the way, issue two is also not too bad. I did not have time to review it this week, but I definitely say check it out if you want more what's going on. Because it's definitely showing a post-Gold Goblin issue five, Norman Osborn, about what's going on in that book. So there's a little bit of mysteries and spoilers there to check out if you want more answers of where Norman is going as the Gold Goblin. But it's actually so well done, I'm going to give it a B plus. Despite the ending, coloring issues, and a few other th mistakes, it was a really well done issue, but this is technically the third time Ashley Kafka has been killed off in the main Spider-Man books, and it feels like she's just kind of getting, as they say, the fridge treatment of everything. And of course, the person who really should have paid for all this, Maxine Danger, is caught over in the All Hallows Eve storyline. So maybe we'll see that since we know there's going to be kind of a redemption arc coming up for Chasm coming up here later in 2023. So it gets a B plus. So not too bad, guys. C, B. B plus, not a bad uh, couple weeks for being a Spider-Man fan. So there's my reviews for the guys, and that's the story I'm sticking with. Got it? Okay. And on that note, guys, I hope you check us out at the Spider-Man Crawl Space for more information and wonderful reviews like our buddy Shy Town Spider-Man. Thanks, Pete, for getting those reviews on while I was dealing with some uh, technical and personal issues the other week. And, of course, our buddy Dark Mark for taking care of all the reviews for our satellite test shows. You guys rule, and it's good that you guys have me back there because, uh, as we know, PainBot sometimes has to take a break from things. So thank you for that. And I hope you guys check us out on our social media. Definitely uh, think of following us on Instagram. We're looking to hit those 600 followers, guys. So go out and hit our Instagram for great news, previews, and stuff on the crawl space. And, of course, our Discord. And on that note, guys, I'll see everybody next week on The Crawl Space.